just a few closing pointers um, and there is no larger thematic framework to what I am saying. I am just pointing out certain uh, features of the text structurally and thematically and then we will move on. Right. So, this uh, is an interesting um, excerpt from the story, the man who could not sleep. Uh, so, how is the work progressing? He inquired of Murugesan. In fact, he had been closely measuring the progress of the house whenever he passed that way. He knew it even better than Murugesan. Even, even so, he had to begin the conversation this way, didn't he? Even so, he had to begin the conversation this way, didn't he? So, the emphasis is in the original. So, why does he have to begin this way? Right? That's a, a question uh, to which you can um, offer some answers. And look at the way he's closely measuring the progress of the house, even more so than the owner, the builder. Right? So, this is something that we didn't know at the start of the story. This, this idea is being gradually introduced to us right? As we, as we kind of know more about the story world and the psychological makeup of um, this Muttu Patar, we, we know these details, these uh, details which are worrying his close observation of the house is somehow worrying and is causing havoc, we realize, right? Uh, causing havoc on his peace of mind, right? Next one, please. So, this is Murugesan. It's such hard work to build a small house with a tiled roof. We can only imagine the trouble that people who put up those big palaces must go through. So, the, the, the comparison between uh, different class systems in terms of the kind of houses that they can build, right? So, you, you can see the layered nature of society through such material productions, right? So, and, and Muthu Patar kind of works it out that, that, that there is a kind of an unconscious or a conscious uh, desire to climb up the social scale, right? Yeah, next one. So, we talked about this one. If the wife walked away in a half, she would go to her mother's house, right? This is the cultural assumption uh, on the part of the husband in most rural economies. And, and in some urban economies too, right? She has to go to the mother, so where else would she go, right? The husband would go there after a few days, beg and cajole her and bring her back. How was he to find out where his sleep had fled, right? So, uh, it's very interesting that he's trying to, trying to bring these two things together, um, you know, as a possible, not, not as a possible, he's trying to place these two ideas together on, on the same uh, plane, the wife who walks away and the sleep who disappears, right? Um, and that reminds me of uh, the earlier uh, comparison that we had about uh, his comfort level when he sleeps um, on his cot in the eastern corner. Right? He feels as if he is being hugged by his absent mother, his long dead mother. Right? So, it's, it's very interesting um, that these comparisons have a similar character and tone to um, them. Right? Next one. Okay, we talked about this, a string of fine needles piercing through the roof and disturbing the occupants. You know? Uh, making life miserable for the occupants. So, the, the uh, metaphor, not the, the simile is pretty uh, sharp uh, there. Next one, please. And we, we saw this one too. We were talking about the translation context of this one. You can live in a weeping house, but not in a leaking one. And then the wife complains and moans, and then Muttupada is forced to kind of catch funds to uh, repair the roof. Okay, next one. Ha, huh. so the worry, the worry of Muthupatar is voiced clearly through the narrator's um, uh, voice. He was already building a house with a tiled roof. He spoke about the toil of those who built palaces. It must mean that a plan for building a palace was already incubating in his mind, right? The plan to build a house. And that guy is working in a mill and he, you know, uh, he has a patch of land and, and 
it's not likely that he's going to build a house all of a sudden, but that is a possibility, a theoretical possibility, and that massively irritates and annoys and kind of destabilizes the psyche of Mudhupadar. Oh, he might even do it. He might even do it. For some reason, who, uh, for someone who built a tiled roof house at 25, would it be such a great feat to build a palace at 50? Right? So what then? What if he did, in fact, build a palace? What, what is your problem? Right? So wh why should you worry this much? That should be our uh, natural question, right? Um, so you can see that kind of uh, competition. And I did a little bit of digging up. There's a reference to a goddess there in the story, right? So there's a reference to a goddess. And if you, um, if you know more about the context, you would realize that that goddess is um, a clan deity or a deity which is, um, you know, uh, which prays to that particular deity, Kari Kali, right? So um, a particular community in this part of the region of Tamil Nadu prays to this clan deity and that is also a counter caste. Konguvelala counter, they, they pray to this deity. And this boy, Murugesan, is also from the counter caste. So they, they belong to the same caste, yet, yet there is a visceral chasm, a massive divide, right, uh, between the members of the same community, right? So um, there, there is a kind of a clash between class mobility, right? Um, there is, there's a problematic of class mobility within the same caste. So just, below, just because you belong to the same community doesn't mean you kind of uh, have sympathetic, sympathetic appreciation of the mobility, the upper mobility of your own uh, members from the same caste, right? So um, that kind of point of view emerges when you do a little bit of research in terms of the details, right? So it's not overtly told in the story that they belong to the same caste, but certain indications tell you that there is no divide in terms of uh, caste affinity or community uh, affiliations. Right? Next one, please. Okay, why this passage struck me was um, again the analogy the brick walls had been raised to a man's height. Right? The brick wall has uh, the brick walls had been raised to a man's height. So that the comparison between a man and a house. Uh, comes through and in this context if you go back uh, to the final sections of the story uh, this story becomes really deeply disturbing okay uh, 202 um, so he wakes up in the middle of the night sneaks out of the house doesn't want to disturb the wife um, so he gets out, walking slowly, he went and stood in front of the house, the house of Murugesan. The brick walls had been raised to a man's height and then the um, gable walls, or the gable roof had been put up. He looked around once, he entered the space enclosed by the walls. Because there was no roof, because there was no roof, so the gable uh, has come up, but there's no roof covering the entire structure. Just to be clear, we should, we should realize that. He entered the space enclosed by the walls. Because there was no roof, moonlight shone brightly inside the house too. He touched and caressed the walls. He felt the pleasure of hugging a child to his chest. Right? Look at the way the pleasure of touching and feeling the house is described, is compared to. Right? The house is compared to a man's size. The house is compared to a little child which is growing up, right? He rubbed his cheek against the wall. A pleasantly cold feeling spread throughout his body. He stayed like that for a very long time. It's not a momentary, you know, uh, touching. He, he stayed in that kind of contact for a very long time. A hen crowed somewhere, possibly it's dawn, 
right? He came to the wall they had built after erecting the scaffolding earlier that day. With great difficulty, he climbed onto the scaffolding. He's an old man, right? He's an old man. He, he does this with great difficulty, right? He made a fist and punched the gable wall they had finished that evening, right? He made a fist and punched the gable wall they had finished that evening. With the punch, some bricks came loose and dropped down. The few teeth that were still left in his mouth gnashed together. He punched hard again. In spite of his calloused fingers and knuckles, he felt the pain. With a second punch, a cascade of bricks came thudding down. Right? And then he goes back home and rests really sleeps well after a long time. The old man is finally cured of his madness today, his old wife said to herself. Right? So we want to know what, what sort of madness was he possessed of? What sort of madness prompted him to destroy this uh, half-constructed house, which is compared to uh, uh, an associated set of ideas, which are maternal, which are associated with uh, uh, the growth of children and things like that, right? So he is destroying a house built by a very hardworking young man from his own community, who is kind of reckless even of his health in order to uh, build a house for uh, his family, right? So uh, I, I will leave the rest of uh, the interpretations to you. Can we move on? Okay, we, we saw this one. Um, maybe the first was not talked about. The first one, he felt as if his whole face was smeared with that ball of spittle. Remember, he uh, spits, right? Um, after, after returning home, um, after meeting Murgason, he spits on the ground and he feels as if that spittle is kind of smearing his face. So he, there, there is a realization on the part of the narrator that what he is doing is completely revolting and disgusting. His attitudes towards this young man, right, is nothing less than disgusting. Okay, we talked about the rest. Um, can we move on? So this is um, Muthupata's conversation to the construction workers, right? Poor boy, he's saving every last paisa to build this house. Paisa, it's, it's a Tamil word to refer to one pais, right? Don't betray him, he told them. If we do, will that money stay with us, Tata? Were you able to make out what this word Tata means? How? Do you have similar uh, terms in your language to refer to? Tata means grandfather, right? Do we have similar uh, terms in other languages? Telugu, Malayalam, Kannadam? Tata is used, okay. Okay. Are we going to build a... Um, are we going to build a palace and rule for a thousand years? Whether we are alive or not, our work will stay neat and honest. There's a lot of irony in that word honest because honesty is not what is suffusing this entire story. Right? So it's, a, it's an ironic concept, something we need to think about. So what are the narratives of honesty that run through this village community? Right? Next one, please. There's another comparison. There's another comparison to uh, the wall. Look at the last one. The wall was coming up quickly like an anthill. This is Muttupatar's consciousness. And in this one, he compares it to an anthill, right? So this, this is not a very, uh, uh, you know, uh, emotionally attractive uh, comparison. Uh, it's, it's drawn from the wild, right? Um, and it, and it's, it, it has a kind of a slight Repulsion, because if we come across an anthill, we, we would not be attracted to it, right? There, there's an uh, undertone of repulsion, right? Uh, in Tamil, we call, call it karayamputta. If we see it anywhere near a house, we, we used to destroy it to protect our houses, right? From uh, ants and other uh, creepy craw crawlies, right? So look at the way he is seeing the, 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 the pace at which this house is coming up. So that tells you once again about his attitude towards the house. It's like an anthill. Right. Next one, please. 
here, what struck me here was um, Muthu's generous response. Again, a, a lot of ironical emphasis is on that phrase, generous response. He is nothing but, uh, he is anything but generous, right? He is anything but generous. But look at the hypocrisy that he spouts. Look at the hypocrisy that comes uh, from him. What are we going to carry with us when we die? We are uh, only here to help one another. Not really, not really. So again, um, you know, this is something that we usually don't think about, the competition between the older people and the younger generations coming up. You would think that the older people would always look at the younger people with, a, with benignity, right? With, with, a lots of, uh, with lots of affection, but not all the time, not all the time, right? So there, there would be elements of jealousy, envy, and, and the fear of being surpassed by the younger generation in the minds of the older. So that is something uh, we, might be, uh, we might want to be careful of, wary of, right? So there is affection, there is uh, benign attitudes from the superiors, from the olders towards the younger, but there are also other subversive attitudes um, and, and feelings, right? Um, so that's, that's also there. So this story gives you that picture, right, that we don't usually see or realize or be conscious of. All right. Next one, please. Okay, this is um, a reference that I just picked up from the story, um, an Indianism, quote unquote, this pale school to which uh, Muthupadra goes to, right? Um, so that's, that's there in the story and that's the reference. It's, it's a porch, porch attached to uh, rural Indian um, housing on which students are taught, children are taught on which you know, the uh, women used to sit and talk or people used to rest. So, um, so look at the hybrid function of that space, which is interesting, you know? Okay, that's it. Mm -hmm.